Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again with another experimentation video. Today I'm going to be looking at what is known as a loudness compensation circuit and it's used or was used on older stereo amplifiers back in the 80s into the 90s and then the control or the switch just ended up being deleted altogether. Uh, in the realms of 5.1, 6.1, 7.1, etc., um, the loudness compensation circuit isn't really needed anymore, considering we have like a, a subwoofer now. Um, anyhow, uh, this still has merit back in the days of electronics. Now, I found this circuit online, and it's a simplified uh, version of, of a loudness circuit. Uh, a lot of the high-end amplifiers like uh, Yamaha, Sony, Pioneer, Technics and all that, they used a rotary potentiometer which actually had four pins, or actually eight because it was stereo. So it had actually two wipers and the compensation circuit went onto the second wiper of the uh, pot. And the idea of the circuit is it gives you extended base and treble response down at lower levels of volume and as you rotate the control up the compensation and the bass and the treble starts to roll back off back to flat. Um, from testing this circuit it's around about the halfway point maybe three quarter point where it starts to flatten back out. Um, the only drawback to this circuit is, is because the ground path of the potentiometer is going through the loudness filter. This is for the base extension here. That adds a little bit more brightness. Um, you will not achieve complete zero volume with the control rate at ro rotated fully counterclockwise. However, considering the control is not going to spend most of its life at minimum anyway, um, probably more around about the nine, maybe ten o'clock position, uh, this circuit's perfectly fine for what it is. Uh, as I said, there is a proper design out there using a proper pot designed for the purpose. I'm using a version of Rod Elliott's a Better Volume Control, which I believe is project number one on his website. I'll link that in the description for reference. Um, where this load resistor goes across the wiper and the ground position of the pot to turn a linear pot into a logarithmic functioning pot. So when the loudness switch is switched in, the path to ground goes through this base compensation network and when it's switched off, it just goes straight to ground so this acts as a normal volume control. The only reason I've used a linear pot here and a 15K load resistor like a better volume control is one I wanted to test it and two it's all I had really to hand was a 100k linear pot so that's that's just what it is so anyway I've built the circuit up on a piece of breadboard now I don't have a 120 ohm resistor so I used 110 and I don't have a 330 nanofarad capacitor so I've used a 220 a 470 is too high, you don't actually hear any extended bass response with that value. Um, I do have a 100 nanofarad capacitor, but that is too low of a value, it gives way too much bottom end response. Um, but I can always put the 100 nanofarad across the 220 nanofarad to give me 320 nanofarad, which is closer to the original circuit. So anyway, let's uh, look at the breadboard. So here's the circuit here built up on the breadboard. I've got the volume potentiometer down here. This jumper wire is connecting to the 15K so I can connect it in and out of circuit. Now that 15K will not work if you put the ground end towards actual signal ground because then the pot when it's in the loudness position will not act as a logarithmic pot. It has to be wide across the actual potentiometer. I've also got an in-out switch connected and over here I've got just a 10k linear pot connected across the input from the signal generator just so I could uh, att attenuate the output voltage coming off of the generator to around I think it was 400 or millivolts or something which is around roughly what a stereo amplifier would see from say a tape deck. Why are you out of focus? Focus you bitch.
Right, so I'll turn the oscilloscope on because I haven't turned it on yet and uh, I've got it set to 60 Hertz and currently with the loudness circuit turned on we've got and the volumes up just a little bit it's sitting around about nine o'clock at the moment we've got 72 well actually no 211 millivolt coming out if I rotate the pot all the way to zero as we can see we're still getting 130, well about 140 uh, millivolts coming out. If I rotate the pot all the way up to maximum, and then I reduce that, I've actually got a volt going in. So, alright, that's probably a little bit higher, so I might rotate that and attenuate it down to where I said it should have been which is about the 500 millivolt range. So that's at maximum. I'll turn it down to minimum. Yeah, we've still got like 78 millivolts coming out of the circuit. Uh, a little bit noisy because of how low in intensity it is, but if I switch the loudness circuit out, well, obviously it goes to zero. So if I bring the pop back up to the nine o'clock position, We've got uh, 52, 53 odd millivolt coming out, and if I switch the loudness circuit uh, on, we see we've got a bump up in the uh, bass response on the 60 hertz. So I know that the circuit is functioning. How well that circuit is functioning, as in into an amplifier, I don't know. So I need to connect it up to an amplifier, but the thing is, I'm going to have an issue with, I'm going to have to put the amplifier which is connected over that side there up to its nearly maximum input volume um, in order to get a decent uh, response out of this circuit so what I might do is I might up on another piece of breadboard build a quick little op amp booster preamp that comes off the output uh, just to give it like a gain of I don't know three maybe four uh, before it goes into the amplifier just to you know so I'm not having to turn the volume up on the um, other amplifier and accidentally destroy a speaker. Alright, got the little op-amp um, circuit built up. So I've got a 2K2 gain resistor and a 10K feedback resistor in a non-inverting input stage. Well, op-amp stage I should say. And that gives us a gain of roughly 3.2. Something like that. No. It'd be 5. 5. About 6. So... The scope's now connected to the output. I've got a, an input capacitor and an output capacitor mainly because I'm using a single ended DC supply source, so there's going to be DC on the output and input. So I've actually figured out how to reconfigure my um, oscilloscope to be AC coupled. So that's the power supply on. And we're at 15.6 volt. For some reason, I'm getting no increase in gain, so I don't know what's going on here with the circuit. So let me just um, verify everything's wired correctly. All right, I figured out what the problem is. I need a capacitor between the gain set resistor and ground on this particular op amp, which is an LM. 833 I think it is and we have an output now um, I wouldn't say it's clean it did actually need a bypass capacitor on the op amp to stop it from oscillating because if I disconnect the um, 100 nanofarad capacitor it's st the signal starts ringing so that capacitor is kind of important anyhow it's connected to my loudness compensation circuit and as we can see, it's actually functioning. And when I turn the volume up full, and turn the volts per division down, I'm getting roughly 3.9 volt peak to peak out, which I think should be enough. It's only really a gain of two when I think about it. Although I haven't got the input up all the way. If I turn the input up all the way and then measure it, 
yeah, well, I've got more like 8 point, no, 9.3 volt peak to peak coming out. So I know if I keep this a little bit lower, yeah, that should be enough coming out of it. All right, now I can con connect it to an amplifier and a signal source and see if the compensation circuit actually makes any physical difference to it. All right, I've got the thing hooked up to the computer. There doesn't seem to be that much gain coming out of it. So I've turned the amplifier up a bit. So let's play a track. That's that's with the loudness turned on. As we rotate the control, the bass starts to drop off. That's off. That's on. As you can see, there's not much um, zeroing. So I actually need a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So now we're at 320 nanofarad. Seems to be functioning as it should. So the only annoying part is it will not reach absolute zero. So the gain structure of the preamplifier that would be in would have to be set correctly, and you also cannot configure a balance control across this input like you would um, in uh, a normal stereo amplifier configuration where you have the you know the balance pot and then going into the volume pot it has weird effects and I played with it for about an hour and a half <laughs> Right, well the concept does work and it would probably work a lot better if it was um, reconfigured as a proper pre-amplifier into a power amplifier and where this is around about where the low end of the volume is uh, and normal listening levels would be probably around about the 10 o'clock position somewhere like that. Uh, so yeah, as I say it will not reach absolute zero which is kind of an annoying um, feature, but that is one of the drawbacks to the circuit. So to finish off, we'll just uh, look at the schematic one more time. 
Um, someone out there may actually know of a better way of improving said circuit so you can actually get closer to minimum or zero uh, output when the volume controls rotated uh, fully counterclockwise but as I say without a special pot that were used in um, amplifiers that featured a loudness switch uh, yeah trying to make one um, this way it, it has its drawbacks and it's not as easy as it sounds However, it works for what it is. Is it needed? No. As I've already explained, with even 2.1 um, stereo systems where there's a subwoofer involved, the subwoofer now has better control of the, the low end at lower volumes anyway. So this circuit is kind of now obsolete and unnecessary. But it is still an, an interesting a technique they used to use back in the 80s and 90s on amplifiers just to you know give it a bit of a bass boost but not to the point where that when it was cranked further up that it was like obnoxiously um, too much bass if you know what I mean it compensated as the volume went up the bass went down and started to flatten out a bit but yeah uh, so anyway uh, I hope you guys found this uh, video interesting I sure enjoyed messing around with it and um, playing with power supplies and op amps and oscilloscopes and all that fun stuff. Anyway, I'm the Astro 30. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down there, rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying see ya. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Happy loudness circuits. There's a laptop there.